Um, under these unusual arrangements, I will take a point of order from Hilary Benn. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Deputy Speaker. On a point of order, the Committee on the Future Relationship with the European Union will cease to exist in five days' time. I wrote to the Leader of the House on the 10th of December to ask for more time to allow us to complete our work so that we could scrutinise the trade and cooperation agreement that was eventually reached with the EU on Christmas Eve. The Leader replied on the 6th of January to decline the request. I then wrote to him the following day to ask him to reconsider in the light of the fact that having asked Lord Frost and the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster to give evidence to the Select Committee on the agreement, neither of them is available this week. This means that the committee that was set up specifically to examine matters relating to the negotiations on the future relationship with the European Union will now be prevented from taking evidence from the person who negotiated the agreement and from reporting fully to the House on its implications. As this is, to put it mildly, highly unsatisfactory, has the Leader of the House given any indication to you, Madam Deputy Speaker, that he intends to change his mind to move us to standing order accordingly so we can take evidence from Lord Frost and uh, the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster? I thank the uh, Right Honourable Gentleman for his point of order. Uh, in answer to his specific question, I can confirm uh, he will be disappointed to know that Mr Speaker has not had any representation such as he describes from the Leader of the House uh, on that matter. I can understand the Right Honourable Gentleman's consternation uh, at the situation as regards the committee uh, which he chaired. The fact is that the order establishing the committee on the 16th of January last year had effect for 12 months and therefore in the absence of any further decision of the House, the committee's activities will indeed cease this week. I'm sure honourable members will want to join me in thanking the right honourable gentleman and his colleagues on the committee for their work as it uh, clearly, sadly, in his eyes draws to an end. It is important, of course, as the Right Honourable Gentleman points out, for the effective functioning of select committees that ministers and officials respond constructively to reasonable requests for them to give evidence. I'm sure that ministers will have heard the points made by the Right Honourable Member and that they will respond appropriately to future requests from any select committee examining the implications of the UK's trade and cooperation agreement with the EU and other aspects of the ongoing relationship between the UK and the EU. But I do appreciate that what I've been able to say uh, is of no comfort whatsoever to the right honourable gentleman.